Oh, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Let's have a seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is great. Good to be in the house of God. Amen. Today is Super Soul Sunday. Amen. To some it may be Super Bowl Sunday, but for us it's Super Soul Sunday. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. He's faithful. And as we saw or as we experienced over this pulpit, it's to keep the main thing the main thing. And that's what we have to do. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all things will be added unto us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, with no further ado, let's open up our Bibles. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome back, Pastor Johnny. Good to have you back. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Book of Luke, chapter 5. Familiar portion of Scripture, but... You know, when Jesus spoke in parables, it was for a reason. Luke chapter 5, verse 36 to 39. And if you are blessed to understand when Jesus spoke, then you are greatly beloved. You're blessed. But how much more when we heed and we follow what was said? Because we can hear, but can we follow? Luke chapter 5, verses 36 through 39, the Bible reads, Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, a new one makes a tear. And also, the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Or else the new one will burst the wineskins and be spilled. And the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. And both are preserved. Verse 39 says, And no one, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new. For he says, The old is better. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence. As it continues to move in this place in our lives, we pray right now that you would give us ears to hear, Lord. Give us a strength, Lord, to, to follow, Lord, to do your will. We ask, God, that because we know you are the mighty surgeon, that there would be surgery taking place, Lord. And that we put you first, Lord. Line us up. Do what you have to do. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to do in our lives and our hearts. The message that you place in it that we may share with others, God. That we may share the good news, Lord, and the great commission that you have given us, Lord. To be good stewards. To bear fruit and fruit that should last. That's what you have ordained us to do, Lord. And your word says that if we do that, Lord, the things that we ask in the name of Jesus, that they will be given. And we thank you, God. And all the saints of God say amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. We know that some of us, or I'm, I'm hoping that most of us here have come to the understanding that in order for us to make it, it is the Lord that has to lead us. The rest of us will find out in this journey called life that if we follow Him, that will be all right. No matter what happens. He says, not by might, nor by, nor by power, but by my 
spirit, says the Lord. And God is calling us to a work that we may not have all the stuff that we need. Even though some of you might think that you got it all together. But I believe that God is going to give us stuff that we need in order to exceed because who he calls he equips. But this work that God is going to do through us in this new year in this congregation, it's not by our might, but it's by his spirit. And Lord, you're going to lead us and we're going to be successful not because we're so good, but because he's so good. Yeah. And because that he's going to lead us through a spirit that we're able to get the work done. Amen. And we know that your word, Lord, it, it challenges us. Because there are some things that you and I hold on to that we should not. That prevent us from becoming all we can be. For the Lord. So is the old really that good as the scripture says? Or is it really better as some of your texts will say? Because in our text Jesus raises an issue that causes a great deal of trouble for so many people. And that the tension that is between Something old and something new. Isn't there always a tension with that? Where someone wants to stay in the old and somebody wants to move in to the new. Or maybe that's not this church. Because when we have something that is working for us, do we want to change it? Can I get a witness? When something is good, do we, do we want to just let it go? Matter of fact, it doesn't make sense to let it go. But at the same time, it creates tension. Because some of us are so comfortable with what we have. That it's hard to do or see what God is doing in the midst. And God has to contend with us because it's so hard for us to see. That way because we have it so good. But sometimes we have to step out and find out that it could be a whole lot sweeter. It could be gooder and gooder as I've heard some people say. And he's not saying that you got to throw the old away. That's not what the parable says. But it's something about good and old. And in this parable in Luke 5 is an admission that our old ways are more attractive or are more satisfying, should I say, than those that are accustomed to different things. And the new ways are not as attractive. Or is that true to some of us? And what's going on in this text today, in our text, it begins with, Pharisees and, and scribes, they're taking issues with Jesus' disciples because the disciples are doing two things here. They're eating with sinners, and number two, they're not fasting. And so the real issue is, are not the disciples following protocol? We have to look at the text. And when you got to be careful is when you're trying to put rules. Because you can be a keeper of rules and missing out what God has for you. Because a lot of times rules are put into place for control. To act a certain way because I met Jesus like this and you should have an experience like this. Or otherwise you're not really saved. And that's the old and the new. It starts creating what? It starts creating tension. 
Because we want to force things on people. Because what we got we think is good. And it's been good all through our lives. And if it's good enough for me, then it should be good enough for you. That's our mindset. Anybody else think like that? You see, look, Luke talks about taking a patch from a new garment and then putting it on an old one. And what sense does that make? So Jesus said, who takes a, a new garment, he cuts out a patch and tries to put the new patch on an old garment. Something that's old. But some of us say, but I love what I got. Because what I've got is, it's been good to me and, I've, and, I've, and I'm holding on it. I'm holding on to it so tight. But what he's not saying here is that the new is superior to the old. But what he is saying is they're incompatible. There are two things being opposed to one another. They are unable to come together. They don't work well when they put when they're put together. Because when you take a patch from a new garment and put it on an old garment, it's already pre-shrunk. But the new is still going through some changes like some of us. And because of the changes that it will go through, it's going to create problems. And the Bible says, you're now left with two garments. And now they're both worthless. Instead of being willing to let it go, or to let one go and to embrace the other, I'm trying to make both of them work together. And we're so familiar to what we have, and when we don't want to let it go, it creates tension. And it's so hard to figure out what God is doing in some of us when there's so much tension going around. And this is what we have here in the text. We have Judaism, and they're struggling because here comes Christ with the new message. And you have some that are trying to take the new message of Christ and mix it in with Judaism. And Jesus is telling them, no, that's not, that's not how it's done. You, you can't do that. I know what you have. It's been good for you for a long time. It's been consistent. It got you to, to the point where you're at right now. But what I'm bringing now, Jesus says, is complete. I'm bringing in the new deal. Jesus is telling them, if you don't let go of what you have to embrace what I bring, because what I bring is complete. Jesus said, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. And the longer the wineskin exists, the stiffer it becomes. Hello, somebody. Being around a long time, the wineskin is not as flexible like some of us. And because it's not flexible, he says, I can't put new wine into old wineskins. Because it's already stiff. And if the gospel in us needs to expand... It has no room. God is moving and he's doing something different. But I'm stiff. 
I don't let the Holy Spirit make its moves where it wants to move in our life. And some of us are struggling right now because we're stiff. Because our wineskins are stiff. Because we want something a certain way and because it's not a certain way, we remain stiff. Rather than just finding out, Lord, are you doing something in my life? Are you getting my attention, Lord? Speak to me. Instead of saying, Lord, I don't understand, but I know you're doing something in my life. So, Lord, speak because I'm willing. I'm willing. And I'm hearing. You know, we, I was talking to a brother, and, and we know the scriptures on obedience is better than sacrifice. But what I tell him that most people miss is the scripture right after that. It is to take heed is better than the fat of rams. It's better than the carnitas with the with the with the with the with with, with the with the, with the with the grease right next to it. That's what it's saying. With the manteca, it tastes it's sweet because when we take heed, we don't only listen but we do it. And that's what Jesus is is trying to explain to us because we want we we want we want the same. Because we're used to it. And we don't want to change because we've been doing it a long time. You're going to miss the whole picture, church. God is, wants to do something new in each and every one of us. And that goes from the top down. We want it to drip like it did from Aaron's beard. But some of us are refusing to accept what God is doing in our life. Do you mind if I preach today? My team's not in it, so I can stay here for about an hour. But we don't want to change a thing. And the white skin burst because it stayed in the old. Because it could no longer be stretched. And when you put wine into wineskins, there's some activity taking place. How many wine bibbers we got in the house of God? It's fermenting. And whenever you put new wines into old wineskins, it, it's moving around. But I don't want to move, Lord. I know you're stirring inside, but, but I don't really want to move. I like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. Can we just all get along? And when we're no longer flexible, it only hurts ourselves. And a lot of you might be saying, well, and you're, you're also hurting others. But you know what? You're really hurting yourself. And in our text, it does not say that the wineskins refuse to be flexible. What the text says is that it can't be stretched anymore. And there's a difference between refusing to be stretched... Or refusing to be flexible, should I say, it can't be stretched anymore. Because it's already stretched to capacity. You see, some of us, God has been doing certain things in our lives. But we don't want to come out of that. God does things in us for a season, but some of us are stuck. In that season. 
Because what God has deposited in us, it's for a time. But we want to stay there. The problem is we don't want to go beyond that point. Somebody else will do it. Sometimes or some things we got to learn to let go and let God. Don't you sense the freedom behind that? There's freedom. When we let go and let God. Yes, Lord, you gave it to me and it was good for me. But now it's time to let go. Because it's taken me as far as I can go. The text doesn't say that the old was bad. It's just some, saying that sometimes we just go as far as we can go with that because that's all God intended. And if I don't want to let it go, then again I'll end up hurting myself. You see, a lot of time God wants to do something in us, but we're unwilling. First chapter, First Samuel chapter 15, it said the people were unwilling. Isn't that what King Saul told Samuel? The people were unwilling. Because it's God saying that I need something that is not affected by something that it thinks it knows. See, God wants to use somebody that is not affected by thinking that they know it all. God wants to use people that are ready, that are, that are willing, that don't have it all together. He wants to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And he does that with new wine. Through the Holy Spirit. Because what we think we might know is not enough. That we literally have to come to a point in our life that we say, Lord, whatever you want. And we will one day come to that point. I believe that. I believe everybody in here. I truly believe that everybody in here it will, is, has or will come to a point where they say, Lord, you know what? Whatever your will is for my life. That's what I want. And actually mean that. If you can use me, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. We know that song. But do we mean that? A fresh anointing. A fresh touch. Lord, I want that new wine. But I can't stay in the same place position or the same situation I'm in because if you pour that new wine it's just going to burst because I can't contain it yes the old wine might be best but the new wine is blessed And that will take you the rest of the way. That will carry you. Verse 39 of our text says, And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he says, The old is better. Boy, 
bullseye. Christ is no joke. He, he nails it. He knows us better than we know ourselves. We don't want to change. It's difficult to leave a long life system that we've accustomed to. It's difficult to adopt a new way of life. But this is what Christ is speaking about in the parable. And Jesus understood, or he understands as our Creator understands, that people would have to adjust. But if I try to hold on to the old, I end up hurting myself. Why? Because we forfeit the blessing that God has for us. Yes, the old is good. But God is still working. I said God is still working. And if we're not able to let go of what we have, we're going to miss out what God is doing. So pastor, what are you saying? Well, what I'm not saying is we don't change for the sake of just changing. Too many churches or too many people do that. Well, we got to change up stuff. We got to we, we got to change for the sake of changing. It's not what I'm talking about. That 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 doesn't work. We change because God is doing something in our lives. That's why we change. That's why people change. That's why people can say, hey, man, you're not the same. Hey, sis, something, to, something about you is different. You're, you're not the same. Something happened. Not only is you're not the same, you're not doing the same things. If any man be in Christ, they're a new creation. All things are passed away. All things become new. Not perfect. Nobody's talking that. But there's a change. And we don't see what God is doing when we think that what we have is good. We miss it. And we don't see what God is doing if I don't let the old things go. And that's why he concludes this passage with the text that I just read in 39. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires the new. It's not easy. It ain't going to happen just like that. It ain't going to taste good at first. He says that the old is better. I don't know why they're doing it that way. Praise Chapel, we've had some good years. But God wants to do a new thing. We'd have some good stuff over the years, but God wants to do a new thing. The path that God has taken us has, has been good, but God wants to do a new thing in our life. But let us not hold on so tightly that we miss what God wants to do in our life. We got to be in that position or that state of mind. We have to stay that, Lord, I want to do what you want. How many want to be in that, in that state? Well, we can. Lord, I, I want to do what you want to do. Isn't that a fulfillment? Isn't that the only way that we're going to be content? You know, to be content is everything. The Apostle Paul said, I've learned to be a content. When I'm up here or when I'm down there. 
I've learned to be a content in all things. Because it's going to take that in, in, this, in this life. I've learned to be content with little and I've learned to, learned to be content with much. And that way we can be content with no matter what happens. Knowing that Christ 